Hey, it's Gregory Kellenberg from the Prize Foundation and the Film Prize, and I cannot tell you how lucky I am and honored I feel to be able to interview the next gentleman and talk about uh, his film, his top 20 film, which is an amazing one. But before we jump into this interview about Shreveport Sun, um, we are going to talk a bit about Prize Fest. Remember, Prize Fest this year is um, going to be from September 24th through October 2nd. In particular, the Louisiana Film Prize is going to be September 30th through October 2nd, where you, the audience, gets to see 20 short films made specifically for the Film Prize, and you, the audience, gets to help determine the winner of $25,000 cash, which, by the way, is the largest cash prize in the world for a short narrative film. It is going to be amazing. You can get your tickets at prizefest.com. Also, I want to tell you very importantly that this year you'll have to show a proof of vaccine or a proof of a negative COVID test to be admitted into Prize Fest. Get it done and come down with us. We want to be as safe as possible. We want to get on the inside. We want to have a good time. Remember, tickets for Film Prize are at prizefest.com. Film Prize is September 30th through October 2nd. You got to see all 20 films to vote, but you will vote for that $25,000 winner. And speaking of potential $25,000 winners, please give a virtual round of applause for my friend and soon to be yours, Mark Bonner. Mark, how's it going? Hey, going great. Uh, I was happy to be on this platform, happy to be able to share the film with the world. I love that. I love that so much. So why don't we start with you talking a bit about your film. Please don't give any spoilers away. Just telling people about what it's about. Um, the basics of the film is um, basically old high school friends reuniting as adults. They're, they've been to college. They've basically an adult life and they seem to recognize each other and they kind of build that bond that was back in the past. And so, you know, and I will tell you, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in all aspects of Shreveport Sun, and I, I want to get into sort of the, some of the, the technical aspects, but before we get there, I'm, I'm curious where the idea came from. Well, I actually, I got the idea from, from um, I constantly I watch, uh, used to be Timmy Lane's uh, Reporter News, used to be Love Bulger Shreveport, and I would look at the comments, there would be multiple bad things happening, and I would look at it and I would say, I would see the comments of people um, basically showing, let's say if it was a young black male that was got into um, certain situations and I would see the comments at the bottom, I would see people talking, you know, a lot of negative comments and they didn't even know him as a person. And I figured why not show an aspect of a film that captures what could happen when somebody goes into this direction and they're not a bad person, it just end up being caught into a certain situation. Uh, and it's super interesting and super topical when you talk about sort of that aspect of the film. Um, you know, uh, you, you've been an actor with Film Prize um, before, as I, as, as I recollect. Um, uh, what, what drew you to Film Prize this year? I mean, Grant, this story was burning inside of you, but like what, what made you sort of take this idea and really want to jump into the world of Film Prize and make a film for us? Oh, I, I felt, um, I felt that maybe this was the perfect time to actually, uh, do this kind of film, especially I saw how the, the constant violence that was occurring, I said, I wanted to kind of show that, um, express that on it, and this would be the perfect platform for that because it's in Shreveport, the name of it is Shreveport, and I thought it kind of shows it on the other side to the other people who may not have experienced something like that. I love that, I love that. And so, you know, I, I, I wanna get into your uh, shooting experience, like what that experience was like making this film. Um, and I'm also curious, there were some interesting choices made uh, as you kind of went between color and black and white. And I'm, I'm curious about those choices kind of going into making this film and what that experience was as you were sort of out there making it, whether that vision that you had in your head was actually being realized 
on screen as you were kind of going through the process? Um, well, that kind of came about, um, I actually originally wrote it in the, on the script. And then at first I wanted it to be maybe all in color, but I didn't want to, I made it want to make it as clear as possible. I didn't want like, wait, we just see him in that car, but then he's like there and he has a beard and you know, he's clean shaven. I went to like well, the black and white uh, represented like from five years prior, right when their senior year of high school. And I actually grew my beard out to make myself look five years past high school um, to maybe show them more as a, an adult uh, ages. And um, pretty much a lot of the stuff was a spontaneous actually because my first time directing something like this and a lot of stuff I just felt was in the moment once I got on set, stuff starts just coming to my mind. I, you know, I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm a little blown away that this is your first time directing because there was so much comfort uh, in sort of the, the, you know, again, everything that you saw, especially what you got from your actors. Um, talk a bit about that production experience. I mean, as you were sort of out there, you know, again, you, you have a, a pretty ambitious project um, you have made these interesting choices. You've grown out your beard. You have sort of like, you know, added two sort of uh, different looks to the film. A lot of planning went into this. What was it like being there on set? And, and even what was that like when you took the footage from on set and put it into the post-production process? Um, well, once, once being on set, it was, I kind of tried to go and like for my actors, when I cast them, I tried to go back to when I was on sets. Um, Cause I've actually been, I've worked as extras on NBC and stuff like that. And I would kind of compare it to when I was on indie sets. I just wanted to make the best experience possible because I know when I saw those people, what they would do, I would just try to recollect that and say, okay, they stopped at a certain time. I try to connect with the actors from something from their memory and trying to transfer it into the fictional story and trying to put it together to make it more as natural as possible and they, as they execute it. And um, as far as like the footage and things like that together, I kind of wanted it to look originally from a kind of a dream sequence almost as, um, cause basically what happens throughout the story is kind of like him reminiscing, reminiscing almost every moment is almost as if it's reminiscing. And, and so, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, you take on a project like this, you're a first time director, super ambitious. Um, what was that like sort of sending that film off? I mean, I mean, you know, again, I am, I'm still getting my head around the fact, Mark, that you're a first time director. Um, so I know that it, it could not have been the most comfortable, or maybe it was the most comfortable moment when you sent your film off as a submission to Film Prize. I'm, I'm curious how that was for you and, and what sort of thinking you had to get through to kind of really hit send and get that film in on time to compete at a film prize 2021. Oh, it was, I mean, yeah, I was really um, nervous about it. I was like, oh man, what if this, uh, what if this is not accepted or anything like that. And I was like, well, you know what? The overall goal was it was um, I just wanted to show the story of this person in Shreveport and whether it was accepted or not. Uh, I just wanted to just put that story out there and say, hey, I created something. And that's all that really mattered. Well, I, you know, that, that's always easy for someone to say who's part of the top 20. <laughs> you know, it's, it definitely it definitely is a very noble way to put it. But I am I am curious, you know, you put something out there. Um, you, uh, you know, put out a beautiful piece of art, you know, you probably do settle at some point, you know, as I said from the podium, we, have, I mean, the, it was shocking to see as many films as we saw, but what was more shocking was to see the quality of film. So you had, your film had to be really, really good. Um, you know, what was it like when you heard your name called as being a film prize finalist for 2021? Oh man, I was, uh, I kind of got a uh, kind of lightheaded a little bit. It's like, what me? And I was like, I was just lost for words. I had thought of um, thought of saying a little speech, but then I said, oh, what's the use of doing a speech? I don't know if I'm gonna get in and all of that. And then once I went up there, it's like, uh, my head was like blank. I was like, I couldn't 
think of my speech or anything like that. I was just like in sheer shock. So, so you know, um, in, you know, as I said before, September 30th through October 2nd, um, people are going to come down to Film Prize. Uh, a lot of people. Um, people are going to fill theaters. Um, and uh, we do it better than anyone else in the country where, where, again, we make everyone see all the films, people see all the films because they love the film prize. You're going to have an audience there. Um, what's that like uh, seeing your film or what do you think it's going to be like seeing your film in front of an audience and what is that message you'd like them to take away? Um, I would say the message I would like for them to take away for that is um, don't be afraid to um, try to pursue your dreams and because that's one of the, the themes in the story. Um, don't be afraid to pursue your dreams. And sometimes you'll meet certain people that can actually inspire you to pursue your dreams. And you never know what can happen, uh, what's the outcome of it. And time is of the essence. Uh, use every, make every moment count and try to live your life to the fullest because you never know when it's, you know, it's all over. Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm curious about that other part of the question. Um, I mean, you've, you've certainly experienced this as an, as an actor, right? But, but what do you think or what can you imagine it will be like hearing people uh, gasp or clap or enjoy your work as you intended them to enjoy it? It'll be, uh, it'll be really amazing. It'll be like a, really like a dream come true. Uh, just seeing everybody, especially if they pick up the like the message that I put into it. I put a little, I put multiple messages throughout it. And if anybody can just, if just one person can take away from um, pursuing their dream or something, then I'll say my job is done. So, 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 you know, let's let's, you know, this this film will go out as before you know that your film is seen. Um, other aspiring filmmakers are going to see this. Other Mark Bonners are out there trying to kind of think about what they want to do with the visions and the dreams they have of making a film. Would you suggest Film Prize to somebody else? And what would you tell them about it if they were interested in doing what you have taken on? Um, I would say um, every great story, every film in general starts with a, a, a script. I would say make sure the script is uh, solid, make sure it's um, very well written, make sure it's producible to what you're trying to produce it to. Don't try to do something that you know you may not have the budget for or the resources for. Try to do something that's, especially if it's your first thing, um, try to keep it as something that you know you can do. Like, um, even if you can't find um, other sources of stuff, like you can find stuff along the way um, but try to stuff that you know for a fact that you can produce or do. So would you tell them to take on something like the film prize? I mean, it's a, it's a pretty specific thing, but it certainly, it, it has, has a big uh, award at the end. Do you, do you think that other people should do uh, what you did and take on the journey that you took on? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, film prize, I think like it's one of the biggest, um, biggest in the world and if they're from locally from Shreveport I love that it's something like this in Shreveport they can just use it for their voice for their to build their platform um I would say if you would if they were to do it like um like I did it they would I would say make sure they plan 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 like because a lot of stuff can go wrong um just like with doing this film you know it's a lot of stuff happening um roadblocks hurdles stuff you thought was going to be there wasn't you have to have plan b plan a next to that same goal like don't switch the main goal just have different plans to make your one goal happen so um mark there is a, a moment on october 3rd where we have a brunch brunches with going to be cast and crew of the top 20 films of the film prize finalists um, we bring out a big check, big, big check, big, big, massive check um, that is basically a uh, symbolic check for $25,000. Um, it's covered with a linen. Um, I invite the staff on the stage to call the name together. Um, the linen goes up. We call the name together, and it is Shreveport Sun. 
Um, how does that feel for you, for the film, and what do you do with the twenty-five thousand dollars cash? Oh, wow, that would be. I mean, that would be uh, mind blowing. Uh, what I would do for that, uh, I think, for one, I would of course um, share that with the cast and the crew. And on top of that, I would actually um, actually make more content for um, Louisiana Film Prize and beyond, like everything like that. I love that. I love that. Hey, well, listen, we're going to give it a little Viva La Film Prize. I'm going to do a little business. I want you to gather yourself and get ready to give it to the world, okay? We do a little Viva La Film Prize together. You good with, you going to do this with me? Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay, just, 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 just get it inside, bottle it up. Um, so again, this was uh, Gregory Kallenberg with the Louisiana Film Prize. Remember, Louisiana Film Prize is September 30th through October 2nd. You get to see all 20 films, including Treeport Sun. You get to vote on the film that could possibly win $25,000 cash. This year, remember, you have to have a proof of vaccine or a proof of a negative COVID test. Tickets at prizefest.com. All right, Mark, you ready for this? Okay, we're gonna okay. give it a little Viva La Film Prize and then we're, we're gonna let you go back to your life. But it has been a joy and an honor speaking to you. And I cannot wait to hang out with you at Prize Fest this year. On three, ready? One, two, three. Viva, Viva La Film La Prize! Prize! Ladies and gentlemen, this was Mark Bonner from Shreveport Sun. He is an amazing light. Come see his film at Prize Fest at the Louisiana Film Prize, September 30th through October 2nd. Tickets to prizefest.com. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, Mark, uh, good luck, and may the prize be with you, my friend. Yeah.